Okay, so this is where we are so far. I have introduced you to the complex plane. We have the imaginary axis going up and the real axis going across. Now every single position in this complex plane corresponds to a complex number. In my first video I showed you how you can also add and multiply these complex numbers. Because complex numbers lying there in the complex plane are really boring just by themselves, in my last video I introduced you to the concept of a function, which is just basically a mathematical rule telling you how you can travel from one position in this complex plane to another. So you can start with basically any complex number in the plane and the function will tell you where you should move next. So it will assign every, every complex number some other position and we usually denote our functions by the letter f. And of course every other point can move to some other location under function f. And this movement is described by the function and it can be really anything. Now what we are really interested in however is taking some point in the complex plane and applying some given function to it many 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 times. So we apply the function to some point, for example this one, it will move. And we won't stop here but we will apply the function again and the point will move again. And we apply the function again and again and again. And we look at where this, we look at basically the fate of this point if we apply the function f to it infinite number of times. And basically two things can happen. The point can either escape to infinity, it can leave, or the point can, uh, for example, some other point can stay what we call bounded. And many th ways this can happen. For example, they can get stuck in a cycle, or they can simply spiral towards the origin here, or they can just go to right towards the origin and stay there. But basically two things can happen. It gets stuck somewhere, or it escapes to infinity. So if you give me some function, I will go to my complex plane here and I can look at every single point one by one and decide for each one whether or not it will escape to infinity under that function or it will just stay bounded. If it stays bounded I will color that particular point black. If it escapes to infinity I will color it something else, say blue. So I will go point by point. You give me some function f. I'm giving this rule and I will go and I'll ask does this point escape to infinity? I'll apply it, the function to it many many million times if I'm somewhere off, somewhere farther away, I will color this blue. I go to the next one. I repeat the procedure. The next one, next one, next one. I will start with all these complex numbers. I will apply the function to them a million times, and I will see if I'm still bounded somewhere here, or if I've escaped to infinity by now. And this will basically generate me a picture. And last time we saw this image, you were looking at the complex plane with the origin here in the middle of the circle. Now the image itself is the result of the procedure that I just described for the squaring function. A mathematician would describe the squaring function as f of z is equal to z squared. In other words, given any complex number z, f assigns the number complex number z squared or z times z, or the result of multiplication of that complex number by itself. Now this program actually allows us to see the path that every point follows. We always start with the point under the mouse cursor and every line segment corresponds to a single application of the function. So you can see that all these points here are colored black because under the squaring function every single one of these points stays bounded. Now in this particular example they all spiral to the origin but this does not have to be the case. The points outside here were colored blue because if we start here then under our squaring function we will always escape to infinity. Okay, we are now ready to look at different functions. We just looked at f of z equals z squared, and we got a boring circle. Now let us make a very innocent looking change to this function. Let us now consider the function f of z is equal to z squared, but let's add a 0 0.25. In other words, the rule now becomes square yourself and add 0 0.25. So if we start with a point here, for example, then... Uh, we're going to square it first, so it's going to be somewhere here, let's say, and then we're going to add 0 0.25. So we're going to move basically 0 0.25 this way to the right along the real line because we're adding the real number 0 0.25. We'll get here. And let's do it again. We square, so I don't know, we'll end up somewhere here, and then 0 0.25 this way as well, so there. So we traveled after one function application here and then here. So the next one might be somewhere off here. So this looks like this point will escape. I actually can't tell. 
we can't tell, but let's not try to figure this out. Let's just plug it into a computer and make it look at every single complex number in this complex plane. Apply this and see if the, if the numbers escape or if they don't escape. So I plugged our function into this program. This is the origin here, and this is what we get from the rule f of z equals z squared plus 0 0.25. So you can see that we get much more interesting behavior going on. We have some little bumps going on here. These points stay. You can see how they move around. And these points here escape. That looks pretty cool. Um, but now look. Look what's happening. We can zoom in here. And look. This pattern basically never stops. We basically got the fractal. These points here stay bounded but these points here escape. Now you can see that we no longer only have the color blue, we also have shades of orange and green and whatever else there is, but all this means is basically we know that all these numbers here escape to infinity, we only color them based on how quickly they escape to infinity. So points here that are orange will take a very long time to escape to infinity, points here that are blue escape to infinity very very quickly. That's all that the coloring means, but all these points that are black they do not escape, they will stay bounded. So we change our function very, very slightly, and already we are getting some very interesting things. Now let's change our function very slightly again. We added a real number 0 0.25 before, but let's add a complex number now. Let's add the complex number 0 0.25 comma 0 0.5. So it's got an measure component of 0 0.5. What do you get? This. The origin is somewhere here. So now we are getting some much more wild things going on here, look. These points basically, there seems to be an attractive cycle here, what we call, and uh, these points are attracted to it and they stay bounded here. And this is a fractal, points here will escape, points in will converge there. So we can zoom into this fractal and it should never lose definition, no matter how far you go. So points here again, they stay bounded, points here escape to infinity. Let's try adding some other constant. For example here I'm adding 0 point, negative 0 0.35 and 0 0.61 imaginary. So uh, this is what we get. Look, there's some really weird stuff going on. These points that converge, they basically just travel there and they get stuck in loops in there and points outside here escape. So that looks pretty cool. And of course this is a fractal and you can zoom here until infinity. And this pattern basically recurs. So every single image that I showed you just now are images of different Julia sets. All Julia set images are created from functions that look exactly like this. You have the squaring function, but then you also add some constant complex number. In our first example, which was just the squaring function f of z equals to z squared, we weren't adding anything, but you can also see it as just adding the number 0. Then in the second example, we were adding the complex number 0 0.25, comma 0. In the next example, we were adding the complex number 0 0.25, 0 0.5. So really, all that changes is just this constant that we are adding on top of the squaring. And as you change this constant, the images you get as a result vary wildly. So every single Julia set is simply identified by this constant that we are adding on top of the squaring. The circle was the Julia set corresponding to zero, because we squared and then we added zero. Our next example was the Julia set corresponding to 0 0.25. The next example I showed you was the Julia set corresponding to the complex number 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5i, and so on. But of course you could be adding any complex number and always get a different image. So every time you see some Julia set somewhere on the internet, it is just one of the many infinite number of possible Julia sets. And if the set just tells you this complex number that they are adding on top of the squaring, you could take that number, start this little application, enter that number and generate that same image from scratch. Um, and hopefully thanks to this video, 
you will gain a new appreciation for these beautiful images because you now understand the extreme simplicity of the rules involved and can wonder how they can lead to such amazing complexity.